Hi, thanks for joining us as we continue to show you the progress of our 60 by 100 pool board. Keep in mind when building a building of this size, you're highly recommended to reach out to your local township or municipality. The procedure was going and filing a permit for agricultural, then showing them a copy of our land survey that was provided to us by LK Land Services. started building the Dutch doors. They are four foot wide by seven foot tall. Originally, this was a project I was gonna tackle to save money, but after I talked to the guys and seen how they were gonna build it and the price they gave me, an estimated five to $700 a door, I decided to let a professional take care of it. We brought one of these JLG lifts in to put all the metal on the building. They boomed it up to the roof, one solid piece up, so there's no vertical seams. And they also used it to carry materials around. It's a huge savings on their end. With the other building being Hawaiian blue, our OCD kicked in and had to make it match. We still love the color, it's just not your conventional barn red. On the top of the building for natural lighting, we decided to put a clear plastic. It's two foot by a hundred foot, the length of the building. What we didn't realize that it was gonna be completely clear and not tinted, so you can see the wood behind it. That's something we would like to get painted in the future. We had them build the end stall doors, also the same design as the Dutch doors. We decided to put stone on this side of the building so it kind of accents the one side of this barn is going to be for the horse. Eventually we're going to frame out on the inside 36 by 60 with a tack room, feed room, and a wash stall eventually. Mid-February, we had a terrible ice storm. You can see these large branches laying all over the ground. Luckily, none of them fell and hit the building. In previous videos, this was all wooded area where we cleared out for the pasture and for the barn preparation. With the timber recovered from the property, we started doing firewood processing also. This is a new access road slash utility right away that I'd like to run the main power and electric and water and gas back there. Before hauling in all the fill around in around the posts inside the building, I decided to use some of this natural grade to run the rain leader pipes. Since there's not gonna be a lot of impact here, just besides horse traffic, I figured it would be safe just to run this at a shallow level, just to get the water away from the building. In this area, I did fill the ditch line in with 100% aggregate due to the traffic. This is the main door. It's a 14 foot high sliding door. So I didn't want the pipe to crush in the future. Here I dug an 18 inch corrugated drain pipe across the road just to convey the water that comes off the hill in heavy rains. I was in need of a machine that could dig a little faster, so I called up my Uncle John and he had this backhoe sitting up his shop he currently wasn't using. He was kind enough to let me borrow it for a couple weeks. From day one till about April in this picture, I had an estimated 500 hours on all the equipment.
About three days after signing the contract for the barn, we found out that we were expecting our first child. So then we had this crazy idea of, hey, let's have a baby shower in our new barn. At first, it seemed a little unrealistic, but then again, I'm always up for a challenge. So we decided to wait and see how the weather panned out. Fortunate enough, it started turning out that the weather was starting to cooperate. In this video, I keep just grading the parking lot out, making it smooth, filling in low spots. I would have to say that this track skid steer has the most hours out of all of the machines. I use this thing for everything. This 232 New Holland track skid steer was an amazing piece of equipment, so helpful on the property. What also made this machine so nice is it was equipped with heat and AC. So in the winter months, you could stay warm and then if it was real hot in the summer, you can still stay comfortable. This was April and we made the commitment. We're having the baby shower at the barn, so it was time to start asking for some help. I just couldn't do it all myself anymore. So I reached out to some really good friends of mine and they started coming over to help me lay out for electrical and cleaning up stuff. I did the layout for the lights. I used the truss plates as a little bit of a uh, cheating tool. You could see they're up in the ceiling and then I laid out the squares counted them symmetrically through the building and ended up working out pretty good. We put a total of 10 LED 200 watt lights in. One of my best friends owns an electrician company, Chris Chico from Chico Electric. We come over and looked at everything and we decided to go with EMT to keep things neat, clean and professional. If you're not familiar with what EMT is, it's pre-bent metal pipe or you can bend it yourself and then you string your wire through the metal and to the electrical conduit boxes. What I didn't take in consideration is how high this was inside the building, 16 foot high. So I had to brainstorm a little bit, ended up making this scaffolding mobile by putting it on an aluminum trailer and driving around with a van. And then sometimes I would put it on the side by side not really sure if this is OSHA approved, but it worked great and I didn't have to rent anything. On one of the last days, my brother-in-law Mike came over to lend a hand with me and Chris and we just banged things out. I didn't have any power out there at the time, so I just hooked it up with a generator. The switches even work too. You did it, Chico. Once all the electrical was done, Chris, Mike, and myself celebrated with a few adult beverages. With being on such a short time schedule, trying to get this building ready for the party, I was just burned out. I decided to sub the stone out to a local stone company in Oakdale. They did an amazing job. It was well worth the money. Last minute, I decided to run temporary water and power out to the building. It's not the permanent electricity I'm going to have eventually. This was just 10-3 wire, just enough to run the LED lights. We still ran generators for the functioning stuff at the party. Here's a stockpile of the aggregate I used for the road up at the barn. This is Reclaim Asphalt. You can purchase this off a lot of companies at a much cheaper rate than actual limestone. I was fortunate enough my dad had some spare time. He could tell that I was up against the time frame here with the party being less than a month and away. He came up on a Saturday and ran this electric and water line for me. It took him about three hours to dig a 500 foot ditch line. The 
perks to reclaim asphalt with the right equipment, if you get it down and get it real level and then roll it in with an asphalt roller, it tends to harden almost like asphalt. So it turned out pretty nice for the driveway area. I didn't have enough time to grow grass up the front here where the pasture is. And a friend of mine, Matt, owns a tree company. He donated a couple truckloads of mulch just for me to keep people out of the mud. My buddy Brandon would come over and he helped us stain the doors and then every once in a while the boss would come out to inspect. She's not as nice as you think she is. <laughs> with the short amount of time we had to prepare for this party, we were pretty pleased with how everything turned out. We would like to thank you for your continued support. Please subscribe to our channel and look for future videos to come. Thank you.